Hi everyone, this is Amy from the Helms Academy and today we'll be talking about reading scientific data and images. Now when we talk about scientific data and images that can include charts, graphs, tables, or other images that help organize some information so that it's more readable. And while these things are organized, it does take a certain skill set to really understand what to look for in these different types of data to really understand what is being communicated in this problem. And often the questions that are asked about the data may require you to look at just part of the data. And sometimes it requires you to look at the data as a whole or analyze multiple parts. So the more that you know and get practice with these charts, graphs, tables, and images, the more that you will be able to tackle these things uh, with ease when you get to the test. Now on the high set, the task in the GED science, you'll see a lot of these. And so today we'll be using an example from the high set free practice test, one that's available on their website. And we're going to see an example that uses both an image and a table and ask questions that will require us to determine what aspects we need to look at in order to answer it. So let's take a look. So here's the first piece that we have. At the top, we see this is about a lunar eclipse. It says a lunar eclipse occurs when a full moon passes through some portion of Earth's shadow. In the penumbra, the outer region of the shadow, some direct sunlight reaches the moon. In the umbra, the inner region of the shadow, Earth presents, prevents all direct sunlight from reaching the moon. When the entire moon is in the Earth's umbral shadow, the lunar eclipse is total. So most likely you've heard of a total eclipse or total lunar eclipse. And you can see here an image of how it works. So we see all those words that were communicated to us now put onto an image. I don't know about for you, but for me that's really helpful because now I'm not trying to just create an image in my mind, but they've given me something to look at to better understand what they're talking about. I can see where the penumbra is, the umbra. I can see where the moon is and the earth and the sun. And so that's going to help me with some of the questions. The second part that they give us here is a table that gives lots of information about the lunar eclipse. And it says at the top, information about six total lunar eclipses seen at the same location on different dates is presented in the following table. The time of day is divided into 24 hours. One day is from midnight to the following midnight. The moon's altitude in degrees is the angle of the moon relative to the horizon. So we can see a lot of different information here about time of day, the different dates, the altitude in degrees, and then we have a beginning, middle, and end section. Now, instead of taking time to try to memorize all this information or read every line, it's best for me to figure out what they're talking about on this table and then look at the questions to find out what specifically they want me to analyze about this information. So for this particular question, they give us four questions to look at. Um, you can see here that they all are a little bit different in their different lengths and what they're looking for. Some looking for short answers about numbers, some looking for statements. So we'll have to determine for each one. Let's look at the first one first. Which statement about the positions of the sun, earth, and moon during a total lunar eclipse is most accurate? So when I see that question and I see it's something about the positions of the sun, earth, and moon, that immediately brings to mind that image that we looked at first. So I will wanna go back to that image and determine what I know about the positions. Now it's good to look at the options first so that I know exactly what they're looking for. So which one of these is true or most accurate? The moon is between the earth and the sun. The sun is between the earth and the moon. The earth is between the sun and the moon or the positions of the sun, earth and moon are unknown. Well, right away I can rule out D because we have an image that shows us the positions of the three of them. So I just need to figure out what order they're in. Maybe you already remember. Let's take a look. So if we look back at our image here, we see sun, earth, moon. And so if we go back to our options, we know that the earth is between the sun and the moon, and that will be the most accurate answer. For our next question, it says on date three, for how long did the total lunar eclipse last? 
We have options ranging from as little as 42 minutes to as many as one hour and 51 minutes. Now, in order to find this out, I'm remembering that I'm seeing these different times of day and the length of the lunar eclipse on the table. So that's where I need to go for my information. I also remember that they said date three. So if you look on the screen there to the left side, you'll see six dates provided. So if I go to date three, how would I figure out how long this lasted? Well, if I look at the very top there, I see the beginning, middle, and end of a total lunar eclipse. So if I wanted to find the total time, I would need to find out how much time passed between the beginning and the end. So let's look again at date three. It started the beginning at 6.09 and it ended at 7.51. So I would need to figure out how much time had passed between those two hours. So we have 6.09. Now I know to get from 6.09 to 7.09, that would be one hour. So then I just need to figure out how much time is remaining from 7.09 to 7.51. When I put all that together, I know that's just 42 minutes. So then the total would be one hour, 42 minutes. Now be careful not to be confused. You'll see there we had 7.51 was the time. So they tried to trick you with the 51 minutes or one hour and 51 minutes. And they also try to trick you with just the 42 minutes without the hour attached to it. So be careful when choosing this one because there will be some trick answers. Now for our next question, it says, which statement about the moon during a total eclipse is true? It is the penumbral shadow, in the penumbral shadow, and is blocked from all sunlight. It is in the penumbral shadow and is blocked from some sunlight. It is in the umbral shadow and is blocked from all sunlight. Or it is in the umbral shadow and is blocked from some sunlight. Now, when I see those penumbral and umbral, I'm remembering that image because we saw those words listed on the image the way it was drawn out. So, I'm going to think about two things here because I'm seeing uh, some part of the statement about where the moon is. Is it in the penumbral or the umbral shadow? And is it blocked from all or some sunlight during a total eclipse? So let's take a look. Well, if I take a look at where the moon is, I see that it's in the umbral shadow. So that allows me to go back and say, okay, it either has to be C or D. Now, is the moon blocked from all sunlight or is it blocked from some sunlight? Now, again, if we go back, it says at the top there, when the entire moon is in the Earth's umbral shadow, the lunar eclipse is total. And we know that a total eclipse means that there's no light reaching it. So if we look at all of our options, we see that it is in the umbral shadow and it is blocked from all sunlight. C will be our best option. For our last question, it says, during a total lunar eclipse, when the moon's altitude is negative, it, is most, it most likely means that the moon is above the horizon, below the horizon, in the penumbral region, or in the umbral region. So let's take a look. This is talking about the altitude being negative. And the altitude, I remember, was on the table portion. So if we go back and look at the table, I see at the top there that the moon's altitude in degrees is the angle of the moon relative to the horizon. Now, if I go down and look below, there are three different columns that show me the moon's altitude in degrees for the beginning, middle, and end. And I see that sometimes it's a positive number and sometimes it's a negative number. So if I'm thinking about the horizon and the angle of the moon in terms of the horizon, I could think of it kind of like I think of a graph. I would guess that anything above the horizon would be a positive, and anything below the horizon would be a negative. Knowing what I know from this table and from the information provided before the table, I'm going to say that the negative most likely means that the moon is then below the horizon line. Thank you so much for watching today, and good luck on your science test. We have so many more videos for you to check out here on the Helms Academy YouTube channel. And don't forget to subscribe so that you get all the latest updates. We also have an Instagram and a Facebook page and our website at helmsacademy.org.